And I literally called up my buddy Guy Tang, Guy Tang from, you know, the show. I was like, I have a bad feeling about this. More! Lunch Break! <laughs> this episode of Lunch Break is brought to you by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence for you and your business. What's up, everyone? Um, we have a very, uh, very, very special episode today because we got Kevin Kreider with us today. Yeah! Thank you. In case you guys don't know, Kevin is a featured actor that's on Dating After College! <laughs> we also wanted to give a shout out to our care holder plus one today is Marvin. Uh, and he requested American food. So if you guys want to be our plus one on lunch break, make sure to check out our Patreon. I got some tots with me. It's tater tot day. Do you guys know that there's a day for tater tots? And then also, Kevin, I got some Bopo Mofo, oh. my cafe, because you went to a different boba shop on your show. <laughs> Wait, okay. <laughs> what year did you open? We opened March 2019. Oh. <laughs> okay, we, were, we were filming then. We were, you were, you're right. <laughs> All right, let's back up a, a quick second. So Kevin recently has been seen on the new Netflix reality show called Bling Empire. Kevin plays Kevin. And today we have so many questions. We have, uh, I, I'm basically when, when we first saw you on there, we're like, wait, that's our buddy. You've been on Wong Fu. Obviously, like I was saying, you've been on uh, Dating After College. Uh, you and I met a few years ago. But yeah, we just have a lot that we want to jump into because it is a very, I don't want to say like, controversial show but there's definitely a lot of chatter from within the community about the show good and bad and also just fans of the show probably just wanted to get to know you more and more about the show so kevin so like even like when you first promoted i was like where did this come from i don't remember like ever talking to you about it but like i, I was so curious to just like hear about how it came about and like how it all started so uh phil you're actually one of the first people i met here in la i was out here it was like 2018 yeah, to do some music video stuff. Uh, I just met Kelly for the first time, who's also on the show. And she introduced me to Kane. And then I just kind of kept meeting all these people afterwards. Uh, you was one of them. You know, obviously you weren't on the show, but it's like... Because I'm not rich. I get it. I get it. <laughs> I do remember, though, like when we first met, you, you actually did tell me like, yeah, I'm shooting this show, like this reality show. Or, you're, or I don't know if you were shooting it yet, but like you said that you were working on it. You know, obviously in Hollywood, everyone's always saying, oh, yeah, I'm working on this, working on that. So I was like, oh, okay, cool. You know, like... Right. But then right. you just never know when things are actually going to hit. And obviously, you know, you started working on it. And when you guys were even shooting it, like, did you even know where it was going to go yet? Well, that's when I first met you, um, I just got asked to be mm. on it. And I heard that Jeff Jenkins was going to be the producer of it. And yeah. he was executive producer for Kardashians. And I just met Jeff for the first yeah. time a little bit before you. And I thought the same thing. I was like, this is cool. Like, I just moved to L.A., I'm just meeting all these people. Jeff Jenkins, Kardashians. I, it was luck of the draw where it was the right people, the right cast, the right timing. And it actually got picked up by Netflix. And thank God, because I was like, man, I could have been sitting here forever waiting for this show to be released or bought. Yeah. I didn't realize how Hollywood worked at the time. Everybody says they're producing something. So <laughs> I, I, I was just like, yeah, I sound like one of them. <laughs> I belong here. I, I, I'm also curious, how close was it related to, do you think, the success of Crazy Rich Asians? It was absolutely just because of it. I mean, oh, okay. like literally, Kelly was working on this project for about six years before Crazy Rich Asians was even a movie because she was like, this could be a great reality show. So she yeah. was with another producer and all that kind of stuff. I didn't know the history of this until we were actually filming. And she was like, yeah, we, this has been in, in, in the works in development for six years. He's like, you just got here. I didn't realize how lucky I was, but I would also say... You know, part of that luck was uh, manifested on my own because she found me from one of my Huffington Post videos. Uh, right, the Huffington right. Post video I did about you're handsome for an Asian guy and it was about my dating experience as an Asian male model. So she got in touch with me because she's like, Hollywood's changing. You'd probably date better out here. And she's <laughs> absolutely right. I want to actually have you like just give the premise of the show. Like you probably say it better than us. Well, for me, the show is me getting introduced to the real life of the crazy rich Asians and just showing the depth of stories of uh, parents and, and family uh, that you normally wouldn't get to see in, in a movie or something. So it's like a docu-series reality show type of thing. And so you get to see me go through the whole life of their, of their family drama. And I'm sure you get this question all the time, but like how much of it was like kind of 
curated around you and the other people. Well, the thing is, they didn't mean to make it around me. It's just that I really am friends with all of them. And I do think their life is absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> so they were literally just say to me, oh, this is this is great. Like, we'll just make this uh, about your new move here. Because I just moved too. Then what's great about this is you don't have to manufacture anything. It's like really just a docu documentary almost. In some ways, like you, you were like the missing piece because like, you know, they're pitching it for six years and it is kind of like, oh, it's just like any other rich Kardashian show. But I think the, the angle of you being like this grounded person coming in gave it a different, I think, element to it. You know, for sure. It's so important. And that, that first line about just like you, like saying your rent, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this is like, yeah, this is so important that you're in this conversation or in this series. I'll, I'll admit that if you or your character wasn't in it, I probably wouldn't have been as interested and we can we can talk about that in a second but i mean like you know congrats on the show it's now like what netflix top 10 there are definitely fans of the show not even just asian fans they're non-asian fans of the show i actually found there was more non-asian fans contacting me and reaching out to me about the show uh which is a little bit of a surprise to me i i have theories on that and we can talk I, about I that you do i yeah. want to hear your theories yeah. Let's start talking about the show and our, our personal experiences with it. When the trailer first came out, I'll be the first to admit, and I'll show you the text, I'm very sorry. I was like, do we need this, guys? That's what the first thing I said. <laughs> <laughs> I think you know what it is, it's like, after Crazy Rich, obviously, like, that was such a monumental project for our community, and we get so few projects already in Hollywood that so many people were, like, jumping onto this essential bandwagon. I was very worried that we're typecasting ourselves into a different stereotype. And I think a lot of people were worried about that, right? I know that Crazy Rich Asians in real life exist, right? But I know that's a very small population. I'm like, oh, like there's so many other Asians to, you know, um, feature. And not only that, but like people have a certain perception of what reality TV is already. And they almost have a, a chip on their shoulder about that. You know, it's, it's very over dramatized and kind of a lot of caricatures and extreme personifications of stuff. And so I think people kind of squirm at that kind of genre sometimes. Right? So it might have made it harder for this have a good kind of perception? Yeah, I wonder actually just in general how many Asian Americans are just fans of reality TV in general. Not many probably, right? Benson, what was your what was your first reaction to the trailer? I mean, when I saw it, you know, even with Crazy Rich Asians, like honestly didn't really attract me. Trying to relate to the characters of being, you know, these <laughs> crazy wealthy people. I was like, you know, I, I don't really have interest because I can't relate. But then, you know, when I'm seeing a character that has like, is very handsome, is a male model, six pack abs, I'm like, okay, I see myself, you know, a little <laughs> bit in this character. So you know, let me give it a shot. Why are you laughing, Phil? <laughs> <laughs> Benson for sure was practicing that joke is what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, okay. For sure. Like the marketing I felt like definitely skewed and kind of was pushing a specific type of image of the show. I definitely questioned what the intent was and what the, the product was going to be. It definitely felt like it was very surface level. Like yeah. look at these very crazy Asians that are very wealthy having kind of catty drama with each other. But like once I watched it all the way through and um, talking with a lot of people, it definitely goes way deeper than that. Well, I was gonna say, I wanna share my first opinion like, of the trailer too, because I, as you guys saw things, that's when I saw oh. things. Like they didn't oh, show man. us marketing or what was in the in the show. And I literally called up my buddy Guy Tang, <laughs> Guy Tang from you know the show. I was like, I have a bad feeling about this. <laughs> I was like, I have buyer's remorse. Like, I don't, I don't want to be a part of this anymore. <laughs> and it was a mixture of like, look, I thought the trailer for normal reality was like fun, but it was like, that's not what I signed up for. Like, right. I was like, I was supposed to be the everyday guy that people could see the lens. And I didn't see any of that in the trailer. Yeah. And I literally, the guy was like, you know what? There's a lot of people who don't like the trailer. We're either going to be known in history as what not to do or what to do. And I was like, I, I think it's the first one. <laughs> this is not what you do. Well, that's what I tried to emphasize with people who say like, you know, what? my first impression was it's trash. I was like, I, I, I get it. I understand it because I was there with you. I was mm -hmm. self-aware like this is not coming across very well or like my message that I wanted didn't come across, you know, because yeah. yeah. it just looked like I was some dumb model just showing his abs all the time, which is a big part of it, right? <laughs> but I actually do, if you time how much clothing I have, it's way more than naked. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> when I watched it for the first time when it released, and especially at the first episode, right? And it started to get deeper in the stories. I, like, I was like, oh, this is where it's shining now. So actually, I think that's like when I texted you. So Helen was actually the one that was like, we should watch this, you know? And I was like, all right. I was doing work and I'm like, okay, fine. You can, you can put it up in the background. And it's just slowly, I was like working and I would just do, do this, you know? And just very gradually, I just started like, just turning to <laughs> <laughs> And then once the first episode was over, which was, it felt pretty fast. I was like, you can play the next one if you want. <laughs> <laughs> once you get past the first episode into the second, like you start seeing, yes, they are rich, super rich people. I was surprised at like how, you know, not vapid the storylines were. And like, you actually got really deep into the family aspects. Had some very tender and heart moments too, yeah. I think it's, it's built into just our culture too. It's like family is such a huge part of, you know, the Asian American experience immigrant experience too so like i'm glad that the show like didn't you know whitewash that you know and, and it kept a lot of the very very cultural i guess struggles uh that we go through yeah. i think the most proud thing i was about this show too was just so many like people reaching out asian and non-asian just saying i reached out to my dad after watching this and i haven't talked to him for years thank mm -hmm. you or I couldn't find my family because they were adopted and i really made the effort to now start start searching for them like that was kind of what made me super proud to like, okay, this, this did something good, not just entertain people, so. All right, as you're chewing, we just wanted to give another quick shout out to our sponsor of today's video, Squarespace. Man, I remember when Wang Fu was first starting out, I was designing the website by hand, learning the HTML, and it was such a pain, but now Squarespace makes it so simple. One of their features, Video Blocks, allows us to feature our video work super seamless and beautifully, and I can tell you that I would not have been able to do that back in the day on my own. There's no need to spend countless hours learning how to code a website like I did back in the day. There's templates that Squarespace offers that are super elegant and work seamlessly with any device. To learn more about the other features offered, head over to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to finally make your website, make sure to use our code WONGFU at checkout to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain name. Links are all in the descriptions below. Now let's get back to the episode. There's a lot of positives that came out of it, but let's talk a little bit about of some of the, neg the negative feedback that it got, right? And and would love to hear your take on it. We're no strangers to that either. You know, as Wong Fu for like 15 years, we've been putting out content and kind of alone in this representation fight for a while too. So in a lot of ways, we've gotten the same types of comments about like, this doesn't represent me. This isn't the right representation. I mean, yeah, the first thing was like about re Asian representation. While we're always talking about wanting more, the main thing was people are like, this is not the representation we want, or this doesn't represent everyone, right? Right. So I guess like, yeah, how, how did you feel when you when you first saw, saw those comments? Look, I think my first initial reaction was, did you watch the show? Uh, yeah. Because it's just like, to me, if, it's about just representation only. You should watch the show first before you actually make that comment. And then if you did watch the show and you don't feel that way, I would also just say, are you looking for the things that make us different or are you looking for the things that make us in common, like the common threads we have? Because if you're only looking for the difference, which is what it seems like a lot of people are talking about with representation, like uh, I think you're going to always find your stories not being told. Right. Because just the wealth element alone is going to make you feel like you're not represented because like, oh, well, I'm poor. Yeah. But I mean, this person's Vietnamese and has family troubles, too. Yeah, but it's not. I, they're rich. And it's like, well, you're looking for everything to make yourself different. So, of course, you're never going to be represented unless you are on the reality show. But it's like there's a lot of common threads in, in this show that I feel like every Asian, no matter what culture you are, can really relate to because I'm sorry if white people and black people and Hispanics are relating to it, you can too. Mm. And so I feel like it's a great representation because um, it kind of goes across boundaries even. Like right, but, but I think that's the thing. I think because there are so many non-Asian fans, Asians are worried that we're planting a seed into these non-Asians that, that this is what, what Asians are like, that we're all rich or, or right. Yeah. Well, I think that's where I hope I did a good job to show that <laughs> not all Asians are rich. And like, I, I, I am not going to be the one to say like, hey, I was the star of it, but I played a huge narrative in it. 
mm-hmm. that I hope like a lot of people who aren't rich really related to. And so when people say like, hey, if you weren't in it, I would have hated it. I still say that as you still love the show because I was in it probably like 85, 80% of the time anyway. So you probably love the show because I thought I was representing the voice of America pretty well. The average person who's working mm. and trying to make things or just fun and just like normalizing and grounding it. So I thought that was a very important aspect. So I understand that whole point of being stereotyped into the wealth too. But I would also say there's a lot of good counterbalances of movies and TV shows coming out that don't just display the wealth. Like Minari is a perfect example. I mean, it's a great movie that's coming out that's the total uh, immigration story of Asian Americans, you know? I'm really glad you brought up Minari um, because I think even here at Wong Fu, we're always talking about that there's not one pill that's going to solve representation, Yeah. right? And... And like you were saying, like white, black, Hispanic, whatever, like whatever community, like in Hollywood, specifically, like, let's use like, you know, the majority, which is white, like they, they have dozens of movies that show them as nuanced, as struggling, as, you know, all that, you know, internal turmoil. And then they also have dozens of of projects that are the trashy, you know, TV too. And so they don't have to worry about one thing misrepresenting them because if they don't want to watch that show, it's okay because they have, they have all these things. And so it's important to point out that like part of equality in representation is the is having that choice of, of what we want to watch. And this is a, a product where we do finally get to put onto that spectrum of like, hey, we have the Minaris and we have Bling Empire and and we can exist in both areas. And that's that's how I see it. And I know I, I still think that there will still be some people that disagree with that, though. But yeah, yeah. and that's the thing, too. It's like I, I really hope more people are like, oh, this is like somebody from Bling Empire. We can move beyond just crazy rich Asians. But I would also say this, too, for representation. I can easily say as an Asian male who doesn't do martial arts, by the way, that every single time an Asian martial arts movie comes out, I'm not being represented. <laughs> I never made it past white belt. You know, like, but I'm not saying that because it's good representation still. It's like something that's part of our culture, like, and, and celebrate it. And I, I see it as a win. Now, do I want every single movie to come out like that too just like crazy rich asians but you know people are afraid of now of course not but if you really look at it that's not what's all coming out warrior was great so what i'm saying is there are amazing shows out there that show a lot more than just the wealth Uh, i just think there's going to be always a controversy whenever anything that comes out has to do with wealth. Benson, what are, what are your thoughts? Uh, I mean, I had a thought earlier, like, would you would you apply that same argument to, like, Jerry Springer or Maury? Like, do you think we, we are lacking in representation on shows like that, too? I personally never liked those shows, but there's an audience for it. Look, but that, I think that's also, going back to Phil, we need a spectrum. However, it's like, I think as Asians... Uh, for our show, we could have easily made it like a Jerry Springer show. There were moments that it felt like it was going to turn out that way. But our producers uh, said, and which I think is really important to have Asian producers on there. Our showrunner's half Asian. And he understood, like, this isn't going to fly well in our community. And he's like, it has to come across as, like, authentic. And there has to be a certain type of class. It doesn't have to be class C 100%. But it's like, that Jerry Springer type of thing, he was like, no, we don't want that. Yeah, I was gonna say that this Jerry Springer might be the extreme where I feel like that's a net, like a net negative of, of that, but like there's a lot of redeeming qualities of, of each character, right? Like, you know, there's no self-hating, uh, you know, uh, Asians. There's great depictions of, of different, you know, types of love also. Um, in terms of characters, like no one was truly trashy just for just for the sake of being trashy. Or just for a joke even, yeah. yeah there, there was like cattiness and however much of it is scripted, whatever, but like, I'm just glad that like, it wasn't mostly like cringe moments of like, oh, I, why, yeah. like people are gonna be seeing Asians this way, uh, you know? I was gonna say, I'll give credit to the producers too, because going in this, they said we don't want that. They're like, we want the drama to come from outside issues like the people the world not Mm. between you guys you guys are family Mm. it's uh Mm. everything happening in your life that's going to be the drama not the fights between you two so much but i trusted them 
And it's really weird to say I trust a reality producer, but I couldn't <laughs> help it because these people were so genuine and having the mission to like actually change the image of an Asian male. That's what they told me. They're like, your job is to just be it. Don't talk about it. You have other times and platforms to talk about it, even after this, like stuff like this. But like, this is your chance to be what you imagined on the TED stage. So do it. That's what you're here for. Let's talk about that. I mean, even before the show, you were very vocal about Asian masculinity and how the media emasculates Asian men. Um, how do you feel like this show did it uh, justice or or were there some parts where you're like, oh, I, th I wish it could, be, could have been better? Look, I, th I wish it was 100%. It's still not. For instance, it's like the whole Kelly thing, getting rejected and calling me her brother afterwards. It's not perfect, but all I would say is it's such a huge step because just the way we know as Asians, that's what happens, right? But the thing is the, the just me being myself on TV like that opened up the eyes of so many people. And now it's, I get so many messages from women and guys saying, look, you're, you're just like cool and sexy, but they're not saying you're the coolest sexy Asian guy I've seen. You're just like, they race has almost nothing to do with it now and it's it's quite an amazing barrier to to be able to hop over where i believe people are now starting to just see asian guys differently in a different light i think even asian guys are starting to see asian guys differently as themselves like you know i have somebody who's like you know taking a shirt off cool just being stupid and goofy right and just yeah that's me you know and i think that's pretty 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 awesome to see yeah, for sure. And I, I feel like it, you did a good job, too, because, like, the level of confidence and the kind of composure you had through the show, too. Not just this, like, surface level, like, hot guy at the same time. Like, I think that helps play into, like, just, like, people seeing you as Kevin. Great, nice, cool guy on the show versus this Asian sexy guy, like you said. Yeah, and I'm really glad the producers, like, the fact that you were talking about the showrunner being, like, half Asian and the producers having this awareness of this and, like, kind of bring you on knowing kind of what you do stand for and like kind of trying to channel that, but having a grasp on what the show's themes and messaging are is so important. And uh, I think like it, it definitely translated. All right, so everyone, this is the spoiler section. We're gonna be talking about the show. So if you want it to still be new, then skip ahead, we'll, we'll put a time code. So it's funny that you mentioned your relationship with Kelly and how she friend zoned you or whatever. I was almost for certain that that was scripted or that, that, that it was set up, but like, did she really call you her brother? She really called me her brother. That's the worst thing you can say to an Asian guy. I said that, and they didn't put that in there, but it was like... <laughs> Your I, reaction I, was like every guy's reaction. Like, it's like, oh my God, so cliche. That's worse than friend zone. That's brother zone. <laughs> I know. That was cringeworthy for me to watch because it was like, oh, it was fun to get rejected at the dance floor thing. It was fun yeah. to me. But then the brother thing, I was like, Kelly, Kelly, Kelly. Because you know that that's a gripe of a lot of dudes yeah. specifically asian dudes but i i get it they, like that's like that's the cliffhanger but there's a different cliffhanger where it's still you and uh, someone else right yeah and, is that yeah have you guys uh since the ending of the show had a, a more talks you know so kim and i we do talk on almost every day if it's starting to feel like a relationship <laughs> if she saw this would she agree with you <laughs> she she would oh, okay. she would she's just like you know what let me invite the next person in the waiting room right <laughs> <laughs> i think me and kim have a kindred relationship obviously because of her father like firstly jesus man that was so powerful for both of us like she really needed a lot of time to heal from that and during yeah. that time of healing i kind of got to know her way better i mean because we we were like kind of enemies in the beginning and then turned friends and now all of a sudden there's some sexual tension and i'm like is this normal? <laughs> like, right, like, but she was just saying though, what really made her see me differently was the whole effort and going back and bringing the news. And she just saw me as a different person. And I just didn't want to mix that up with a hookup or like, what is this? You know, now we see each other. We're like, what are we doing? Should yeah. we do this or not? And I'm like, I don't know if I want to. Like, <laughs> should we? Maybe save it for season two. Yeah, yeah, that's the will they won't they of season two. But even that that search for for her father, like, was that planned at this at the top of the shoot or like no. that, that came organically? That came from right after the PI, right, and and getting the news, and they're like, you know, the producers were asking Kim, it's like, what do you want to do with this? And they're like, nothing. I don't I don't want to see him. And then you know they kind of shared like with uh, you know everybody's like, okay, like 
we can't really do anything. And I was like, we got to do something. And that's kind of where it came from, where I was like, I don't want to say it was my idea, but it was <laughs> definitely me pushing towards this. Cause I'm like, we have a chance. Like she's not going to do this ever. So was it like, cause obviously it's not like every day, day after day, like these things are happening. Oh, was it like you yeah. thought like, for example, you know, oh, we have the baby shower or, or you know, like we're going right. to call up the producers. Hey, by the way, we're planning this. Can you guys right. set up a shoot for that? And then you guys all gather for that together. Yeah. Like, so they'll be like, Hey, I'm doing a 100 day party for Javon, which, you know, that's the thing. That's the stuff, which is kind of a miracle about shooting the show. You can't plan the timing for that stuff. Like, you know, like the birth of yeah. Javon, right. like there's... You can't tell yeah. Cherie to hold By that way, in. That that was like, wait, when that happened, I was like, wait, did we just see a baby come out? Of yeah, I was like, we just we watched their home video just now. That's that was like, crazy. What? That's what I mean. You can't plan that stuff out. That's the miracle. I think when that happened, I was like, this show is something special. What was the overall time span that it was shot? So from the pilot till we finished wrapping, we shot the pilot about three months before we shot everything else. So we had a pilot for about a week and a half, two weeks, and then we had everything else for about two and a half months. And then we just did more, oh, like uh, we have a party that we want to throw. Oh my God, like we can't miss that. Yeah. Let's shoot. So it'd be like, you know, it's not the traditional pickup shots. It's more yeah. like, we have something really fun and important happening. Do you want to shoot it? And they'd be like, yes. And then they would just pick up another day to shoot. I was just going to say, like, now that we know kind of this friend group you're in, I was wondering if you could introduce us to Anna, you know, fan favorite. <laughs> yeah. Um, could sure. use some fashion, maybe fund a new, ser fund a new series. Wong Fu is, uh, is uh, taking investors at this time. One shopping spree in Paris could fund like three movies. <laughs> three movies. Look, I'll make the introduction. I just want to be in him. <laughs> oh yeah, no, you got it. Sure. That, we're just so proud of you, Kevin. You know, uh, it, it was a great show. Congrats on the wild success of the show again. Um, we're really uh, looking forward to seeing season two. Hopefully, yeah. we'll cross our fingers. I was very vocal on the other end of the experience where I was like, I'm eating my words. I I was ready to like, you know, just write this off. And to anyone that's like, you know, that hasn't watched it, that's being critical of it, I would say give it at least two episodes before you make that comment and if you still yeah. don't like it that's totally fine yeah that's totally like, fine it's yeah. like a cup of tea all right yeah. if you don't yeah. like it please go watch minari like that's yeah. and watch warrior and warrior go and warrior. watch warrior right now and you know what watch dating after college dating we barely touched college. on it but the origin of kevin's abs was in that show we saw the potential of your abs very early on but yeah anyways kevin we're, i'm glad we met all those years ago thanks to our uh, plus one Marvin Dohi for being our uh, care holder and helping us select lunch today. Cheers. Kevin, any last words? No, man. Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having me. Make sure to follow Kevin in the links below, and we'll see you on the next episode of Lunch Break. All right. All right. Bye, Bye, everyone.